So yeah, this mini PC is definitely putting down the power. Being able to run Forza Horizon 5 at 4K on this thing is absolutely amazing. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the all new Menace Forum HX99G. Now a few months ago you might remember a similar PC known as the HX90G and that was powered by a 5900HX CPU. But with the HX99G, we now have Ryzen 6000. In fact, this is using the Ryzen 9 6900HX and we also have a dedicated Radeon GPU here. So this is a full-fledged gaming machine. We're not working with integrated graphics, we've got a discrete GPU here, and I'll tell you, this thing puts out some amazing performance. So when it comes to the overall design, hasn't changed much, or if any at all, from the HX90. Always been a huge fan of how this thing looks. And they do give you a couple options when setting this up. You can actually set it horizontally on the desk, we've got the rubber feet here on the bottom, or you can use the included stand, and that's exactly what I like doing. I think it looks really good sitting vertically. Inside of the box, obviously, we'll get the HX99G. It also comes with a 280 watt power supply. Now, this isn't your normal power supply with a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. This actually utilizes a four pin connector because we do need to send a lot of power to this unit, given that we're working with a discrete GPU and a high end mobile CPU with eight cores and 16 threads. It's not a super low power consumption mini PC. It will require some juice, but when you compare it to a full size desktop, I mean, this really isn't pulling that much at all. I've just mounted it up on the included stand, and this is a carbon fiber stand. And if you look closely at the unit itself, you might notice we've got a little more carbon fiber going on here. So what they've done is where the bigger exposed areas are, we've got carbon fiber armor, and the whole case itself is made of a carbon fiber reinforced plastic. Not exactly sure how much carbon fiber is mixed in with the plastic or how they go about doing this, but either way, I still think it looks really good. And the carbon fiber armor, where they placed it, it's very tasteful. And I think it kind of sets the whole unit off. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. We've also got audio in and out. USB Type-C 3.2. And obviously, we've got our power button here. But uh, a lot more is happening around back. Because we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Three more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports two full-size HDMI ports, and two USB 4 ports. So overall, we can connect four displays here, two 4K and two 8K60 displays using USB 4. And by the way, both of these ports are 40 gig protocol, so if you did want to connect an external GPU or really fast storage, not a problem at all. I wanted to give you a quick look at the internals, and getting the side panel off is quite easy. In total, to get down to the M.2 drives and the RAM, it's going to be eight screws. And with this one, we are using DDR5. They've added some heat sinks to the RAM that comes included with this. You can buy it with 16 up to 64. We've also got two M.2 SSD slots here, so we can easily add storage to this unit. And of course, when it comes to the specs of the HX99G, we've got the AMD Ryzen 9 6900 HX, an absolute beast of a chip, eight cores, 16 threads, up to 4.9 gigahertz. Now with this, we also get built-in Radeon 680M graphics based on RDNA 2. And since we're using an HX variant chip, these are actually clocked up to 2400 megahertz. And you could get some gaming done on this if you wanted to, but that's not the big claim to fame when it comes to this PC, because we've got a dedicated GPU. This actually utilizes a Radeon RX 6600M. We've got a base clock of 2060 megahertz and a boost up to 2416. We've also got eight gigabytes of dedicated GDDR6 VRAM, and I've already done some testing with this. This is a great 1440p high machine. Older stuff, you can go up to 4K, but if you want to max everything out at ultra, 1080p is definitely where it's at but I'm gonna be sitting at 1440 to 4K with everything we're gonna be testing, and I've been more than happy with the performance this thing puts out. And like I mentioned, the HX99G utilizes SODIMM DDR5. I've got 16 gigabytes at 4800 megahertz in here, but you can get this with up to 64 gigabytes. This supports two M.2 SSD drives. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and for this video, I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro, and I'm really excited to get into some testing, so let's jump over there now. So I've been testing this out for the last couple days, and you know, when it comes to these mini PCs, I usually mention these are snappy. This thing's actually fast. I mean, we've got plenty of power here from the CPU and GPU, and even if you just wanted to use the integrated graphics for some light gaming, you could definitely do it. 
but we've got that RX 6600M, which is really going to up the GPU performance in this mini PC. Now, the very first thing I always like to look at with these uh, Ryzen based PCs is just what we've got for a TDP on the CPU side of things. This is looking outstanding because we've got a boost up to 75 watts with the 6900HX and it kind of just plateaus off around 55, which is more than enough for gaming. It'll keep the clocks up on all eight of those cores. And one thing I really like about this is even though you can push a lot of power to that CPU, it stays nice and quiet. Now with this, it's got a dual heatsink, dual fan setup. One is designed to cool the GPU, one is designed to cool the CPU, and this is one of the larger coolers that I've seen on a mobile chip. Plus, they use liquid metal, which boosts that cooling performance. Seven copper heat pipes here, dual fan setup, and even while gaming at 1440p, pushing as much as we can out of this thing, it's a really quiet system. And not to mention, you know, just everyday normal use, photo editing, web browsing, email checking, document editing, even video editing, this thing is whisper quiet, and if you wanted to use it as an everyday PC, just keep in mind, you've got more than enough power to do basically anything you'll ever need to do on a machine like this. But obviously, this mini PC was designed for gaming, so let's see how it performs. And we're going to start off strong here with Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high settings, no FSR. You can expect an average of around 68 FPS out of it. And if this isn't enough for you, we've always got FSR that we can mess around with. I'd say taking it the balance would bring you up to around a 78 average performance. We'd be in the 80s to the 90s. But personally, with a machine like this, I wouldn't mind setting it just like it is, turning V-Sync on and playing it at 60 all day long. Before we test out some more games, I did want to check out some benchmarks and when it comes to Geekbench 5, single core 1601, multi 9740. I actually expected to get in the 10,000s with multi core but you know we're real close and single is looking amazing for a mobile chip. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. First up, Night Raid 47,749, Fire Strike 21,644, and finally Time Spy with an 8,836. Obviously, with these synthetics, it tore up these benchmarks. This is no slouch. Given the form factor here, we are getting some great performance, but we need to test out some more real-world gaming. And next up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. High settings, 1440p. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this is more of a 1440p high setting or an ultra 1080p machine, and there's really no other way to put it. Now, of course, with FSR, a lot of this stuff will do over 60 at ultra, but I'm trying not to use FSR here just to see what we can get. And at ultra, with most of these games, I mean, we're right there on the edge of 60, kind of dipping into the high 50s. God of War, 1440p, high settings, we can get an average of around 81 FPS. Now this is one of those games I really do like to test. It does kind of tax that CPU and GPU, and going up to 1440p on a mini PC like this is really impressive. And this machine can even handle older games at 4K, very high ultra settings, or if you're into fighting games, then this is a good little machine. Here's Injustice 2, 4K, very high, which is basically maxed out. I don't think we have an ultra setting here. You'll see that frame rate dip down to 59 to 60. If that wasn't on, I'd never notice it. And another one I tested was Street Fighter V. Of course, we can max that one out at 4K. And Mortal Kombat 11, very high settings. Dirt 5 is one of those racing games that gives even newer PCs a run for its money, so I definitely wanted to throw it in here. 1440p, high settings, we can get an average of around 78 FPS. Looking really good, and if you did want to go up to Ultra, again, taking it down to 1080 is really the way to go. And of course, since we're on the racing genre, Forza Horizon 5, 4K, high settings, 71 FPS on average. Really great performance, and this is without FSR. You can go up to Ultra with FSR set to balance, but uh, I think High still looks great here, especially at 4K. And the final game I wanted to test here, at least for this video, was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I love using this built-in benchmark. We're at 1440p Ultra, but once you set this to Ultra, it actually does turn on FSR or DLSS if you're using an NVIDIA card. And with this, it went to the quality preset. 
and we got an average of 97 FPS, a low of 54. So we did dip under 60 in some instances with that benchmark. So just going through and taking some of those settings from ultra to high is probably the way to go. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was total system power consumption. And with a mini PC like this, it's definitely going to be pulling a lot more than some of the other mini PCs we've seen with Ryzen 6000. And it really comes down to this GPU pulling around 115 watts at max load. While I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall. At idle, pulls around 26 watts. 1440p gaming, on average, 172 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull was 236 watts. And that's maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time. I also monitor CPU temps while I'm doing my testing, and I can't stress it enough, this is a really quiet PC when you compare it to others on the market. We have those dual heat sinks with dual fans kind of keeping it separated, and at idle the CPU is around 38 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, we only reach 71 degrees Celsius, and in a 10 minute Cinebit stress test, 87 degrees Celsius. So with everything I've thrown at it so far, I never saw thermal throttle with this unit. First impressions of the Minus Forum HX99G, loving the performance this thing's putting out. I mean, it's definitely a gaming machine, 1440p high, 1080 ultra, and with some of the older games or more optimized games on the market, 4K is totally in the realm of this thing. I love the look and design. I will always have this in a vertical position, but remember, we've got those rubber feet on the other side, so you can set this horizontally. And all of the air is actually pulled in from the top of the unit and pushed out of the side, so you won't block off any kind of ventilation if you have it sitting horizontally. Really up to you, but personally, I think it looks really good with this stand. There are a couple more videos that I have planned with this machine, and you know, when it comes to emulation, I can do a full emulation video. I mean, we've got power here. This is going to run anything at 1440 to 4K. It'll handle PS3, it'll handle Switch, it'll handle Xbox and even Xbox 360, but if there's a real interest, I can do a dedicated video, just let me know in the comments below. But what I've got planned so far is at least a Linux video. I'd love to install SteamOS 3 on this and see if we can kind of get the same 1440p performance in Linux that we just saw in Windows. And if you've got any kind of request at all, just let me know in the comments below. There are more PC games that I'd love to test out on this machine. It's just kind of running short on time, and I've already gone over a lot of stuff with the HX99G in this video here. But overall, I'm a huge fan of this PC, and if you're interested in learning more, I will leave links to Minus Forum's website in the description below. Keep in mind, this was the HX99 and not the HX90. That one has a 5900HX, this is using new Ryzen 6000, and they also have a 5800H version, but they all have this dedicated Radeon 6600M, so GPU performance will kind of be the same across the board. It really comes down to your CPU choice and the price you want to pay for something like this. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about the performance, form factor, and look of this unit? But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in seeing more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on. And like always, thanks for watching.